morning guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Erlia, otherwise known as Marcy Chick, and in today's video I will be taking you guys to some buy sell trade stores to be selling some items and also sourcing some items for my online reselling business. I'm a full-time reseller so I do source quite often and sourcing at buy sell trade stores is just a small portion of actually how I get inventory. Before we get started though I thought I'd show you guys exactly what I was bringing in today. It's currently fall transitioning into to winter so I tried really only to pick a few items that I thought that they would pick for this type of season so a lot of sweaters athletic wear and one pair of jeans so this is just a basic urban outfitters sweater and this one kind of has the fuzzier knit to it so I've sold these before at the buy sell trade store that I'm intending will pick this up so I'm hoping that they'll like that one the next is just a basic waffle knit free people sweater then I also have a fuzzier wild fable sweater I'm actually wondering how this will do because it is a larger size but the ones in my area actually do take a lot of target brands so wild fable and universal thread I'm not sure if this will be the same for where you're at but I live in the tri-state area of Pennsylvania New Jersey and New York so that's kind of why they're looking for those items next up is just a forever 21 little knit hooded sweater and this is really easy now I just was inside and I took off all of the labels with the dates on them and the seasons that these were each made just because they actually do go based on the year and the season so if you do take those off they can only go on style I was recently at my local buy sell trade store and they had their sheet right in the open of what things that they were currently looking for and sweaters were the one thing that they weren't necessarily looking based on brand but on style so I feel like since I took the style tags out, not necessarily the material content, but just the style tags, that these will actually go a little bit better than they have previously. This is just a little sweater that I picked up, and these are all from the bins. There's so much dust coming off this. This is just a basic hem and thread sweater. I believe they sell these at TJ Maxx. But again, since these are from the bins, I kind of feel like since I'm paying less than $2 per item, that at least I'll still get a little bit of a profit back. I'm not expecting to get rich off of any any of these items and actually I'm not sure what it's like where you guys live but where I live there's only a lot of Plato's closets so Plato's does not have a really good compensation system for items that are brought in and they'll say that they pay you 20 to 40 percent of whatever they want to sell the item for but really they'll really only give you 20 or less percent of what they're gonna sell the item for because obviously they want to make a profit too this next item is just a cute little airy offline sweatshirt and this has like kind of like a tie-dye print to it. I thought that they definitely take this at least because they're looking for athleisure pieces. And then I also have some sweaters, a pair of American Eagle jeans, and like I said, I did take all of the tags off, so I do think that they have a better chance of selling. So I'm going to be heading over to two buy sell trade stores at least today just to see what I find. These are two of my personal favorites. I have 12 items in total in the bag, which were $2 or less to purchase. So we're going to see what I get for these today, but like I said, I'm not intending to make a lot of money on these items and anything that I don't sell today is going to go and get sent directly to thread up because I really just want to liquidate inventory and move it out and see if I can get some more money for these items I occasionally do source specific items from the bins to sell at buy sell trade stores these are items that I just find personally trendy but they might have an average sales price that's a little bit lower than what I'm personally looking for in my online store so you're gonna head over to two of my favorite buy sell trade stores and see what we can find today as well and I'll show you guys also what they paid me for these items.
when you usually go into a Plato's Closet or a Style Encore or whatever buy sell trade store is nearest to you, they will usually ask you for your name, email, phone number, and driver's license number just in case something's to happen. And for this store in particular, they did have me wait inside the store because they wanted to make sure that my items actually got back to me. A lot of places do have trouble with people that just leave items there and then come back later. I did see a woman come in like a week later than she dropped in her items one time and got mad that they had donated her items but you do sign on the line that if you don't come back by the end of the day they will donate your items so you need to make sure that you come back they took a lot of my items I think they said they took 10 of my items out of the 12 so already I made a really good profit um, they paid me 45 some dollars for the 10 items which means that it was 450 per item I thought that that was really good because a lot of the brands like I showed you guys were just like airy forever 21 and things like that so I'm not exactly sure what they didn't take but those are at the bottom there overall I thought that was a really great trip so if I ever find more sweaters or more in-season items I'm probably gonna sell them to this specific store because I have sold to other stores before and they usually only give me around three dollars to 350 and that is not a lot but 450 per item for items that I paid less than two dollars for I feel semi good about because I'm just liquidating inventory however if you are selling your own clothing please do know that they are only going to pay you a specific amount let me take off my coat here I'm sweating in this car <laughs> let's look at the items that they didn't take first okay this one is understandable this one was just a sweater I thought that they would take along with the rest of it it's just from eyeshadow which honestly I forget who actually sells this but it's not a super great brand or material so I do understand that that one didn't have tags on it at all so I'm gonna have to double check that and let's see what else they didn't take here Actually, that's a lie they only gave me one item back so I must have only had 11 but either way I still feel like that's a really good payout and now I only have one item to liquidate which is really good for me so let's show you guys what I actually ended up getting the first I did find on camera here and this was a Lewitt um, wool and mohair blend sweater really loved the pattern on this big balloon sleeves and this is pretty much in perfect condition so I can just steam this and get it good to go they didn't know what this was worth so this was only nine dollars which great price for this the sweaters it looked like online go for around 80 to 90 but I think since I'm modeling this as well I can kind of choose whatever price I want and it is a really great fabric so I can kind of demand a higher price on those these Madewell jeans I found in the clearance rack these were only four dollars don't know exactly the style of these these are called the high-rise slim boy jean and these are in a size 26 really great basic piece that you can pick up and these are also in a nice dark wash I am almost always looking for dark wash jeans because I sell out of them very very fast and I think my eyes naturally drawn to more light wash jeans as well so I need to be picking these up these can profit me around 40 to 50 dollars so paying only four dollars for those was ideal usually buy sell trade stores do mark up made well a little bit in my area they mark made well jeans at 20 dollars which is not good I don't know exactly why these ones were on clearance but sometimes they'll just rotate things and put them on clearance. At this store in particular, I found Redon on the rack. I found Lululemon on the rack for clearance for $4. So these were a great find. And then I found... I've been trying to pick up more Beach Riot because Athleisure is going to be really hot for the new year and I loved this set. This is a Beach Riot sport set in a size medium and if you guys don't know the label that is what it looks like. It's just this funky snake print set with a matching top. This is the front of the top. It has a little bit of crisscross action going on here and then just a plain halter back. This set is so gorgeous and this cost me $20 so I did pay up for it for a little bit here but again since I'm modeling some of these items I definitely feel like I can demand a higher price especially for that set the next item here I'm not sure if I should have picked up or not but I have found these there and I have sold them for around $50 this is just a brand new tags NBD dress for $14 and this was so pretty and I feel like for any formal occasion these are great has little grommet action in the front there with a little bit of a strappier back so these are always great to find for me a nice bread and butter and the final two items here were definitely my best find I almost always find high-end items at this specific Plato's closet so this one struck my eye because I usually feel up materials to see if they are 
cashmere leather wool this felt like leather to me so double checking the label here this is genuine leather and on the inside it's just polyester this struck me because of the fun inner details as well so the brand is called Bano E Me this is from Canada and this is a nice olive green color and what size is this um, this is a size two, so I'm not sure if they have different sizing or not, but this is just a nice moto jacket from them. This only cost me $14 for a genuine leather jacket, and online these are around $150 to $200, so we're going to see what I can ask for for this in particular. This might go a little bit better on eBay for international buyers, but this was just perfect. I looked for this for wear, and it does have light wear on the mesh leather in the front, but otherwise it's in really good condition. So this was a major score for me, and again, like I always find good things at the store. I've also found an IRO jacket and if you watch my what sold videos that actually was one of my highest selling pieces for one of my months here so that is a great find and then the final find I had to ask the worker to get up on the ladder to get this item the girls in there were so nice today so she got a little bit of a step ladder and jumped up there I don't even know what size these are but I knew I had to get them these are Oxford Doc Martens in an oxblood color and that's the front detail these are so fun a little bit of a Chelsea boot these smell brand new like I know someone wore them because there's a little bit of creasing on the top here but the bottoms look completely clean these I did pay up for I paid $60 for these but these ones I know could probably get me around 150 to 200 so I'm really excited to see how these ones go double checking the size here these are a women's 11 and a men's 10 so I was really excited to find these again like whenever I can find Doc Martens at a good price and a good style like this I will pick them up I was really spying at these from across the room so I was like are those docks I don't know but otherwise why would they be up there so a lot of times in buy sell trade stores I do find docks but they're priced up way too much for a regular ordinary style but these ones are definitely not ordinary and now that I'm looking at the label these actually look different so they have a regular Doc Martens label on the inside but they say made in England I'm not sure if that's a different one or not and also this little label at the top is leather so again I'm not sure what I can really ask for these yet I would guess between 150 and 200 but for paying $60 for these I definitely think I'm gonna make a good profit since I'm in this area today there is a really good thrift store over here that I'm going to hop into but I will see you guys at my next buy sell trade store of the day closet and it wasn't that good usually at this one it's like hit or miss but I did find a few things I only spent $26 and I found three things two of which were hats this is a Marmot hat and honestly I don't really know how much these are worth but this is definitely a big ski brand and for this winter I thought that this would go and I really liked the pattern and of course when it's new with tags and it's only four dollars I'm gonna buy it so that was a good pick and then this one I wasn't sure but I felt like I could pull the threads back through this is a Carolina Kaufman for anthropology hat originally $48 and I only spent $6 and then the last thing that I got here was the most exciting thing of this haul and they were these army green high Doc Martin boots you guys know I love Doc Martens and they're really in style right now so these were only $21 and I'm guessing it's because they thought they were more worn but here's the thing they aren't worn black these are just worn green so they look a little bit different than other boots do so they have this pretty little like lace up detailing in the front and then they also fold down if you want a more girly side to them 
So I really love these and the bottoms look good. They look good as a whole. So I'm really excited to get these listed. The only things that I could see that visibly were wrong with them is the little aglets have some wear to them. I also had a $5 off coupon. So I used that in there as well. So like I said, it was only $26 as a whole, which I thought was really, really good for these boots and the two hats. So I only thought that I was going to go to two places today. However, since I didn't find too much today, I might go to one or two more. This is definitely the problem with buy, sell, trade stores. There are so many people sourcing at them, so it makes it really hard and competitive to find things in person. And if you're a person that drives to these stores like I do, you might be wasting gas on days that you really don't find anything. So if you're thinking of starting to source at the buy, sell, trade stores, do keep that in mind that I don't think that they should be your only source method you probably still should be going to the bins or thrift stores or online sourcing or other methods that you're doing I know when COVID hit it was really hard to get into a Plato's closet or any buy sell trade store for that matter so just keeping that in mind is a good idea also I wanted to tell you guys this like little secret hack I don't think that you should do it all the time because some people can be kind of biased towards resellers as employees but I have heard of other people just going in and asking the employees if they have any of a specific brand in stock. They do have a computer system so they can look up to see if there's any in their current store. There was a girl on Instagram that I follow and I'm forgetting her handle right now, but she went into her local buy sell trade store and her employee was really nice. So she asked if there were reformation dresses in the store and the woman actually did find some for her and they were all new with tags, which is great. I have also seen another gentleman walk into a store and be like hey are there any Canada goose jackets here and the lady was like uh if you ever find yourself in a buy sell trade store and the employees are nice I mean you could always try it I personally have not yet but if there ever comes a time when I'm kind of in a rush or if I just know the person at the register is really nice I might just go ahead and ask them so keep that in mind yourselves but use it at your discretion Good morning guys. I am realizing that my battery dies way more often than I realized because it died yesterday. Now don't worry, I'm ordering a new battery this morning because I'm not dealing with that anymore. I can't tell if it's just the, like the sheer amount that I'm filming or if it's just because it's really cold out in Pennsylvania right now. But either way, I have my items all hung up. It's the next morning. I'm gonna sit down and do a little bit of a haul and talk to you guys about my remarks on this last trip because after a night thinking about it, I think I'll did one thing that was different than all of the other times I've tried to sell my items to buy sell trade stores so I think it might help you as well so let me grab these items and I'll meet at the kitchen table <laughs> so I believe I left you guys off at my second buy sell trade store stop I ended up going to one consignment store in the city and another buy sell trade store at the end I didn't find anything in the consignment store and I think it's just because everything was priced up so much that I didn't think that I could make a profit but then after that I ended up going to the buy sell trade store that I used usually find some good things at so it definitely was no different this time the first item that I found ended up being these little blue hunter boots I don't exactly know the height description of this I guess this is like mid calf these were in excellent condition and the soles on these pretty much looked perfect these were only $20 usually when I find hunter boots they're pretty marked up and I thought a color like this for the springtime would be really nice so these need some cleaning a little bit but with a little bit of olive oil I know that these will be bright and shiny and new again so I was really excited to find these at such a good price I think the hunter boots will sell between 80 and 100 dollars and since I only paid 20 I do feel good about that flip I've been trying to make more high profit flips recently this past November everything's been super consistent but it's been consistently around the $30 profit mark um, which is good that's exactly where I want it to be and I know that I'll reach my goal this next month but when things are slow it makes me a little bit more worried so now now I'm going to be focusing on those higher profit flips to make sure that I don't have any of that worry near the end of the month. Um, the second item here for shoes, these were so exciting. So this store usually marks everything up and for some reason they didn't to these. These are cowboy boots. They had a lot of fry cowboy boots there, but I guess they just didn't know what these were. These are Durango boots. They have the price tag over the label, but you can almost see it on the bottom there if I cover my face. 
So that is the label on the bottom there. I'm guessing they just either didn't see it or didn't recognize it. But these were only $23 and they did have a coupon. And these are pretty much in pristine condition. There's a little bit of wear, but usually when you see cowboy boots, they have a lot of wear. So these were gorgeous and I really loved all of the embroidered details on it as well. These are genuine leather, so these are always a great find. I think I can flip these for around the $120 mark. So for only paying what I did for these, these are also a really great flip. The store in particular does mark a few items up, like I said, but I usually do find higher profit items there. So I was really excited about those two specifically. Shoes are one of those things that are super easy to photograph for me, but also end up in a high profit. So if I have to stick to anything in my own closet from now on, I would say shoes, dresses, sweaters, and mostly high profit items like that are things that I'm gonna be sticking to in the future. The next item here, it was priced up a little bit more than I would have wanted to, but I do sell this brand pretty consistently and I really loved the color of this so this is just like a cotton candy colored cardigan from Sundance and these are the sleeves guys this was so adorable this is a medium to a large so I really really love this this is acrylic but it's also wool and mohair so yeah this was just gorgeous and i know that i can make a decent profit on this one i did pay 12 dollars for it so it was a little bit more than i would have wanted to pay for an item but either way the fabric on this i know that i can price this up a little bit more i've sold sundance even from the bins around the 60 dollar mark before so this was an absolute great find and also i really loved the chunky knits especially for the fall and i think the spring those won't go away so that was an excellent piece for me to pick up the next piece here was a new brand to me and the brand was called marcus loopfer and that is what the tag looks like if you guys can see that I'm realizing there's no size tag this was only 11 dollars. this is 100 percent merino wool and it doesn't have a size on the other side so i will have to actually no it has on the label okay on the label there it says it in black and i don't know if you'll even pick it up right there extra small this is a more slim fit item but i don't think it's exactly an extra small because this looks like it would fit me but this is what the sweater looks like. I think that's a little flamingo in sequins. These are actually really desirable designer items and this was only $11 and it's merino wool. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna be pricing this one at yet. I think I'll price it around the 120 to 150 mark. It needs a little bit of depilling on the backside here but otherwise is in perfect condition and all of the sequins are in perfect condition. And who can pass up a little bird like that? I couldn't, I just couldn't. But this last brand was a major bolo brand for me that I have not found before and please excuse my pronunciation because I know that I'm not gonna say this correctly so if you know the right pronunciation let me know down in the comments down below but I'll just show you the tag it's bomb and perth garden and I know I've seen this before on some bolo video hauls but bomb and perfed garden perfed garden it sounds like a German or a Swiss name this was a little bit more on the expensive side for me. I paid $28 for this, but these go around $150. This was a floral plaid button down long sleeve mini dress and I love it. This is so adorable and I know a modeled photo of this will do it so much justice. There was nothing wrong with this whatsoever and I'm actually surprised that they even marked it only at $28 because sometimes with this store if they find out that it's a desirable designer item they will mark it up around $40 or $50. So this was definitely a major score for me and yeah I really loved this. There was nothing wrong with it so this is definitely a great spring piece that I'm excited to see how this one goes right now it's november and i am still sourcing for winter time here but i know spring is going to pop up so fast that i want to make sure that my closet is ready with sweaters dresses and things like that that are more profitable so let me see if this actually has a material tag i didn't think that it did but let me just double check I'm not seeing a material tag on it, so I will have to double check later. I think it's just cotton because it feels like cotton or like a poly blend. So those were all of the items that I ended up finding on that last trip. Oh gosh, eBay sale? And soon. Okay, just kidding. Let's get the final remarks, however. So you guys know I went to a total of four stores and I ended up with quite a bit of items all under $200 spent. 
However, some days I do go and I hit up multiple buy sell trade stores and I don't find anything. I usually go at the beginning of the week, um, but this time I went on a Friday. I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not. But I would say that this is definitely a more risky business model, especially if you don't live close to a buy sell trade store and you do have to drive out of your way to get to one. Some days you don't find a lot and also I think sometimes it can be more competitive in there now. Um, it wasn't at the start but recently I've been seeing a lot more resellers and buy sell trade stores just buying whatever they can whether they're beginners or more experienced. Um, I think it just makes it a lot harder for other resellers to get their hands on items in person. So that is one thing to keep in mind when you are sourcing at buy sell trade stores. That being said though, I did do one thing differently when I was selling to the buy sell trade stores. That is probably why they ended up taking the majority of my items. So the one thing that I did that was different than any other time I've brought things in is I took off the date tag. Not necessarily the material content tag, but just the date tag. So give me one second. I'm going to go see if I can find one in my inventory really quick. I think I found one. <laughs> Excuse the appearance of this item. It's been sitting in my car in my bins to sell to the buy sell trade store for quite a while here. It is just a Madewell extra large knit sweater. It's more of like a waffle knit material. I ended up putting this one in a box of other things that I thought that they would take. And I'm almost positive yesterday I did give them a Madewell sweater and they did take it. So the difference between the sweaters that I gave them yesterday and the sweater that I have in my hand today is that this one has a date tag on it. So this one looked a little bit different than the other ones I saw. Usually they'll have a smaller date tag underneath all of the other tags. This one has it built into the material tag. So if you guys can see there on the bottom there, it says SU17. So that means this item was made in the summer of 2017. Usually buy sell trade stores will look at the dates of items and they'll only go between the past year to two years when they are sourcing their own inventory. So I'm going to test this out myself and see if they take this item once it's steamed and prepared and everything again. I'm going to actually cut off the bottom of this tag and see if it makes a difference in them taking it or not. Again, I have tried selling the items that I gave them yesterday to different buy sell trade stores and they didn't take them. So I think that's the only thing that I did differently this time and the thing that made the most difference. Obviously the last item that they didn't take was just a kind of like an off-brand item so I can imagine why they didn't take it based on either style or brand. That item didn't have a date tag at all in it so they couldn't really go on that but they could go on the other things. But overall, I think if you want more money for your items or if you want the buy sell trade store to take more of your items, definitely take off the date tag of that item. Also, I thought for the price that they gave me per item, that was actually pretty good. And most of the times I source items for the buy sell trade stores when I am at the bin. So I'm paying $2 or less per item. These are more female focused trendy items like H&M Forever 21 and that sort of thing. But I usually do try to put my focus on better styles and materials. Like the one time I found an H&M blouse, but it was linen and I felt like that would definitely go and it did. But yeah, I would say biggest tip, take off the tags on the bottom and see if there is a better return for you. Especially for those of you just wishing to clean out your own clothes closets this season to the buy sell trade store, taking out that date tag, not necessarily the material content tag, but the date tag should make a big difference. That is everything I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. And if you did, give it a big thumbs up down below. And if you've gotten to this point and aren't subscribed to me yet, make sure that you hit that little subscribe button down below, as well as the bell to be notified every single time I put out a new video. I am so thankful you're here and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.